Okay, so I'm recording. So the aims are to construct the category of generalized point modis over any field K that contains all smooth, connected, and commutative algebraic K groups. In particular, every such group has a dual in this category. Mm. So that's important thing. Second, establish, establish arithmetic duality theorems for these generalized one motives. Or can you explain what you mean by one motives or are you gonna say that later? I'm gonna say that later. Okay. Yeah. Actually, people have defined these, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. not, not in complete generality. So, uh, this category that we're looking for, so this constructed category, so this category should contain the category of the lean one motives and Lamont one motives. They should be contained in this big category. Mm -hmm. this, has been, this has been done already over a perfect field. So, um, so Henrik Russell did this. Huh. Henrik Russell in 2013, I think. That's the paper that I, I sent you a copy of that, or, or I mentioned that anyway. So uh, the paper here is called it's called Albanese. So he defined he defined uh, a category like that because he was interested in defining Al Albanese varieties with, model, mo with modules. So, the, the, you know, generalizing the uh, generalized Jacobians that are very well known from the 60s. Yeah. Uh, over perfect, over perfect field. Okay, mm -hmm. so, and, um, and well, okay, so so are these Albanese's are for maps into what? What? Excuse me. These Albanese's are for maps into what? Like they're uh, like uh, there are two types of Albanese varieties: one for for morphisms and for rational uh, map, birational maps or rational maps, something like that. This is for but, the rational maps. Yeah. But I'm saying maps. So you're saying maps into what? Commutative groups? Maps into? Yes, yes, yes. maps into rational maps from varieties into commutative groups. I don't recall all the details. Maybe connections. I don't know, but uh, I see. And he defines Albanese's for maps from arbitrary varieties or something. Maybe uh, that's no, an assumption. no, smooth and pro proper and smooth, or smooth and projective. So he he start he yeah. Well, smooth. the projective isn't the big deal, but yeah, yeah. Okay. But smooth is a big deal, of course. Yes, yes, yes. But the projective is yeah. Okay. I see. So he defines ra rational maps into algebraic uh, groups and. And so he defined that he's able to define these Albanese varieties hmm. and with modules, you know, taking away some divisors or things like that. I see. So, yeah, yeah, his, his paper is excellent, very interesting, very nice. Yeah, and, hmm. but I'm, inter I'm only interested in a small part of what he does. I, I'm interested in his definition of one motives because I'm thinking about duality theorems. He didn't, he didn't do anything about arithmetic duality theorems. All right. Okay. And uh, so he was interested in other things and this. Um, and so, so what about uh, the, the arithmetic duality theorems? Well, they already exist for the lean one motives. The lean one motives are supposed to be included in this category. Mm. And, and, and the arithmetic duality theorems already exist for these. So that, that's okay. by results of Harari and Samueli. So or, can I ask you, for this, uh, these arithmetic duality, like, because I don't exactly know what these delene one motives are. How does this connect to like the the things I did on, uh, you know, affine group schemes of finite type? Yeah, your thesis. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. I'm, I'm, how does? Okay. I'm going that way. I'm going. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So what is a delene one motive? Uh, so these are uh, you can view the them as a uh, as a. Um, as a complex of length too. Okay. Mm. So here you have a lattice. So this is 
uh, ethyl isomorphic. So it just, it's free, no torsion here. It's free. Mm -hmm. So all, over some ethyl extension, uh, you get uh, a lattice. And then here you have a semi abelian variety. Okay, okay. So this, is, this is an extension of an abelian variety, variety by torus. So that's mm -hmm. a typical abelian one motive, no torsion here. So, okay. and, and there's a duality, a concept of duality. So mm -hmm. zero here and here. Uh, uh, See, for instance, if we have the, 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 the special type zero G, where G is a semi abelian right. variety, then the dual of this one uh, will be um, the, the lattice that corresponds to the toric part. And, okay. and, and then uh, the dual of the abelian variety part. So, right. that's of duality. So, that's a very nice theory. Very nice theory by the you know, one motives. And so we, uh, so the, the arithmetic duality theorems have already been found, uh, developed for these by uh, over a number of fields and by Harari and Samueli, periodic fields also, of course, the local version and then number fields. Hmm. And, and I did it for, for, um, for function fields. I have a paper on function fields here. Yeah, I'm right. a little, it's not a big deal, but I'm a little surprised by the numbering I get because. So the numbering is like zero one, I guess zero degree zero degree one. Oh no! Oh, you mean or negative one zero? Yeah, mine. Ah, that makes more sense. Wait, no, actually, I'm still confused because if you have an abelian variety, right, then the dual presumably, presumably the dual should be something like the Arham, which I think should be the dual abelian variety in degree, well, concentrate in degree one or whatever. So a t of negative one. You mean x one x one a g m something like that? Is that what you're thinking? Yes, about? yes, 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 yes. The or hump. So, so it seems that if you had a G in an abelian variety in degree zero, you'd get the dual abelian variety in degree one. But maybe there's, I don't know, maybe you shift it or something. Maybe there's yeah, like there's a, shift a shift in the dual. There's there. a shift. There's a shift. I see. Okay. Yeah. The I definition see. is arranged so that you, you uh, use a shift so that all your one motors are in degree minus one. I see. I see. But, but, but that's okay. a convention. You, you, could, you could have a, you know, classical like Sure, sure. Classical like, like that, you know? Sure. But, but the thing about the lean one mode is that you get a semi abelian variety, here, nothing else. So you don't get any, any general algebraic group here. You just get an extension of an abelian variety, right? Right. right? So, and here you have something without torsion. Right. And so, and so the, the lean one mode is, uh, have duality theorems, but still, you mm -hmm. know, in the function field case, you still have to, to use uh, finite coefficients, p torsion finite coefficients, coefficients because. Even if even if this is a Z, then at some point you mm -hmm. have to use to, to compute the cohomology of, uh, of Z over PZ, right? Mm -hmm. so, so you get something right. uh, finite. So you still have to use, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the function field case is a little bit more difficult because of that. But right. I wrote that paper before like, uh, Chesnavicius came into, 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 you know, right. It is his work on, 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 on these uh, group schemes with P torsion, you know, he found the quad two case, well, uh, right? Sequences and defined the topologies and it did all this these nice things, you know? right? So if you know, if I had uh, his uh, access to his work, it, you know, I wouldn't have suffered so much, <laughs> you know, right. doing the functional field case. But you know, right. things happen. Anyway, um, so but you know, you know that uh, Chesnavich's work is very powerful. Powerful right. and, and interesting, and all that. Okay, so so we we're lucky that we have it, you know. Mm. All right, so um, so for the link one moves about about this, I don't know nothing. I know nothing about the one moves. Okay, I'm okay. early, okay. but I, I know I know a bit about them. The, the lean mm. one moves because they're more classic, you know, older. Uh, okay, but we have some good news. Uh, I'll define. Maybe I should define this immediately. Uh, well, the Russell definition comes later. You know, I try to get organized so, so it's not mm. be so chaotic. But perhaps I should just give his definition over K perfect. Okay, and right. Hendrick Russell defines that one motive this way. Um, so let me see where I wrote this. Um, oh yes. So he, he says my one motives are contain unipotent, have unipotent parts. You know, mm. so 
So uh, F is a formal group, is a formal K group. Mm -hmm. And uh, which, but of a particular type, the Cartier dual of this guy is an algebraic. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a formal group of a particular type. It's dual algebraic. He calls them dual algebraic. And in, sorry, sorry, sorry. Could you give an example of something like this? A formal group with a dual whose dual is algebraic? Um Jesus, let me see. Yeah, I mean it's okay if you I'm just curious if you um uh, uh it must be in there must be, I don't know if uh, uh Henrik uh gives an example, but uh okay it, I will have to look for it in the I can send it to you by email or something like that. You know, okay. I, I didn't think about that. Um, I was actually concerned about the general theorem, the abstract part, but of course we, we would like to have some examples, right? Um, I guess I could cheat, um, take the, the double, the double dual of the formal, of a finite something, you know? Well, okay, certainly you have like finite group schemes, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Finite group schemes but I'm curious about this, this category. But uh, what about um, what if I take uh, what if I take the formal completion? Okay, I don't want to confuse this. You use this notation for the Cartier dual, okay? Right. So, so but uh, I'm here. I'm thinking about the, the, the formal completion of this guy. Okay. So I guess the dual of the, that's a formal group, and this dual should be maybe should be. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'm a bit confused. So sorry. A formal group is like a collection of uh, what finite group schemes, such that. It's oh, a, sorry, no. The limit. No, no, no. It's inductive limit. Yes, it's inductive limit. And then what's the dual? The dual is the inductive limit or the whatever of the Project, Cartier dual groups. Objective limit. Objective of, limit. Uh, sorry. Yeah. So I see. you should get something like a formal spectrum or something. Yeah. And so to say that the dual is an algebraic group. Okay, I see. I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I'll try to read. So th this, this stuff, in order to, in order for for us, for me, in order for me to master this, I have to really understand SGA three, SGA three, seven B, okay, which yes. is a people's paper on 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 formal groups, and that is written in a very, let me see, I don't want to say unfriendly, but it's very abstract and very general. Okay, you know, I, I've tried to understand this many times. I've read this many times, mm -hmm. and but without examples, there are not many examples in it. So, I guess this is my chance. I mean, trying to uh, read. I haven't read Hendrix Hendrix's paper, Russell's paper, deeply. You know, I haven't had the time to do that because I've been teaching all that. But, but I, my my one of my projects is to to really understand his paper, and because he uses this 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 one, so. Read both at the same right. time and try to at least get some examples for this. You know, this is, I haven't, I haven't right. had time to do that. Anyways, so, all right. So F is a formal K group. Uh, okay, so it says of a certain type, and G and G is uh basically anything i mean l this one is an alpine mm -hmm. uh algebraic group and this is nothing in variety so you know we're over a perfect so perfect. just everything then yeah okay. what yeah this is over a perfect field so chevalet's theorem you know okay so g is just an algebraic group you're saying yeah essentially algebraic. okay maybe uh not even connected because this one this guy could be you know could have mm -hmm. some finite uh factor right could be you know an extension it's a, it's a direct product this guy l here this guy is a direct product of a unit potent and times a group of multiplicative type okay if we over perfect field so they split and so right. and these, these guys yes. uh, i'll use it i'll use a word that you like very much and and, and brian also brian conrad <laughs> yeah hmm. this one is homologically harmless yes you know right. because, because it's it splits, you know. Go on, all right, on. right. Yeah. So because we're over a perfect field. Yes. So this guy. So as far as uh, 
arithmetic to all the theorems are concerned, you know, I feel over a perfect right. Number so okay, I could just assume that this guy is a multiplicative type. You know, a torus, a, a finite by a torus, an extension of the finite group by a torus. The finite group to have uh, uh, p components, but I don't care. I'm, you know, I'm working over perfect fields and I'm doing arithmetic, so I should be, uh, be working over, over p-adic and number fields. So I don't care about it. Mm -hmm. So, so that's not too painful. Right. And 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 so, but that's so. But this guy can contain, you know, unipotent that that will be perfect, no problem. So, for, sure. uh, for that purpose, yeah, okay. But of course, uh, things are not as e as easy in over an imperfect field. So, but before talking about this, I want to mention a, a thesis by Peter Joseph. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter uh, is a uh, former student of uh, Samueli. And so okay. he wrote paper on arithmetic duality theorem for the Lean one modus with Harari. Okay. So yeah. um so Peter Johnson, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, okay. Hmm. Uh, November 2009, he wrote uh, his thesis and he defined one motives with torsion. So he moved a little bit beyond the category of the lean one motives. And so what are these? Um, over, any, over any regular base, okay? But we're working over a field. Mm -hmm. So, um, and so this guy, this uh, is no longer a lattice. Okay, it's an extension. Mm -hmm. And here we have a lattice, so something that uh, it's how locally is uh, just free Z and mm -hmm. R to the R, you know. But there's right. a finite here, there's uh, some torsion. And right. this, guy, this guy, G, um, it's an extension of an abelian variety by an X. And here, this X also, well, is of the type of this type, you know, it's, it's a torus. Uh, by a, you know, a finite by a torus. So he allows. Is, is the finite thing multiplicative or just finite flat? Finite flat. I mean, he's working okay. on any S, it's a regular base. Okay. So it's what I called an almost torus in my thing. I see. Yeah. Uh, yes, an almost torus. Yeah, this is an almost torus. Right. And, and so it, it's a, you know, but he considers, uh, of course, the fact that he considers uh, finite flat here. And also here is yep. probably because the duality, when he defines duality, he's forced to do, you know, right. find it in both, you know? And, well, but that's no problem. Right. And then, uh, so he defined these and he proved duality theorems, arithmetic duality theorems for, for these one modes, but only mm -hmm. over piatic and number fields. Right. So, so these uh, over piatic, and number three. So this is the work of Joseph. Right. So, so, okay. And so there's one, so there's one open problem, at least one. So his, I, I wrote here, his work has not yet been extended to local and global function. Mm -hmm. So local and global function field, global function field case open. Right. So, and this is, you know, one of the first, uh, it, you know, we, maybe I'm getting too ambitious. I haven't even done, tried to do this, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I'm already thinking about something more difficult. Mm. Anyways, uh, I'm still going to try, you know, global and global function case, function field case. Mm -hmm. Still open. And, you know, there's some hope that this can be done using methods similar. To the ones in the, that Joseph used, used right? Plus Chesnavicious. Yeah, Chesnavicious work. Yeah. Right. And so and, and so it shouldn't be too difficult to do this. Right. You can work on Chesnavicious, combine it with this, uh, and do the pain of all those computer diagrams and the, uh, you know the five lemma, four lemma, and all that. You know. But right. it should be, it should be not too hard to do. Um, that's what I wrote here. You know. Of course, once you have the the arithmetic duality theorems, you want to, 
you know, develop applications to like the Brow groups, the Brow money infrastructure, and all that. Okay, so, mm -hmm. so I'm going to continue with the work of Russell. I already okay. defined his um, his group, yeah, his uh, one motives, and then, mm. and okay. Now I say here, oh, oh yeah, and and because note so. Um, it should be possible. So arithmetic duality theorem. So arithmetic duality theorems for Russell. One motives over piatic and number field because uh, Russell worked over perfect field. Okay, so we have to restrict to these. Uh, arithmetic model theorem for Russell one modus over piatic and number fields should follow without difficulty, should follow without difficulty. Let's put it that way. Okay, let's be optimistic. Mm -hmm. By combining the work of Harari and Samoli. So I mean arithmetic duality theorem for one motive, mm -hmm. the lean one motive. So uh, the work of Harari Samueli, mm -hmm. uh, combining that with the work of Joseph. Yes, because he did the uh, you know the torsion. And, and, and why I'm saying that? Because, because of what I said before, that the unipotent factors in, in the definition of Russell one motive should not bother us. The unipotent factors over number field, you know? So you only have the finite torus, a big variety to, to you know, uh, worry about. And so by combining also, there are some many technical details, but combining these two, the works of, of these three people, uh -huh. uh, uh, arithmetic dual theorems for, for uh, Russell one motives were chaotic and number fields should not be a problem, really. Right. So, so, but of course, things get much more interesting when we talk about imperfect. Uh, mm. So, global functions, local functional fields and global functions. Okay, so, uh, <clears throat> all right. Um, mm -hmm. Now observe, uh, at least for observation, observation um, over 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 k perfect, uh, we can associate, we can attach a Russell one motive to any uh, variety of well. To, to any decent variety, to any uh, probably separated, uh, separated and um, and geometrically connected, and I mean geometrically reduced. Okay, maybe connected is not uh, it's not uh, it's a restriction that's not helpful because maybe things you get disconnected later. So separated and geometrically reduced. So any uh, variety or scheme, or case scheme, mm -hmm. uh, at least for the proper ones, okay? But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump into the student pool now. Um, so uh, to any, via a compactification, mm -hmm. okay, no, no, no smooth compactification, no, 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 just compactification. Okay? This exact, these compactifications exist in, in very, in a, in a very wide, Setting, okay. Well, wait, sorry. How do you get from the compactificate? What is your associated one motive? Um, I'm going to write it here. So, the mm -hmm. compactificate. So, you take a, a, this one, this geometrical you separate it, you put it into yeah. a proper one, you know, right? And there's a boundary. The boundary should be a divisor, maybe very nasty, but uh, mm -hmm. it, it divides it, you know. And uh, so, you got your boundary here, and then you take the Picard. Um, mm -hmm. Proper guy, right? Take the identity component, then you take the smooth part. Right. And, and you don't have to assume anything. You don't have to, this can be very widely, I mean, the worst thing you're a thing that you can ever think. <clears throat> but you I mean, I'm just, 
what is the map from B to the, I mean, doesn't that require, uh, like, don't you need some regularity of the compactification or something for, uh, um, like, I'm just confused because like in order for a divisor to define a, um, a line bundle, right, you need, you need that it be, I mean, you need that it's like, uh, it defines a principal thing locally and that's like a local factoriality statement which requires. Uh, maybe, yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure I'm skipping some hypothesis here. But, uh, like there might have to be a regular compactification, which yeah. may be subtle and positive characteristic. In characteristic zero, you're fine. But yeah, yeah but, but, but I'm working on, uh, yeah. K, uh, oh yeah, K, K perfect and positive characteristic, yeah. Characteristic zero, no problem, because you have resolution of singularities, you know? Right, uh, but, but it's not so clear in characteristic P, I guess. Yeah, but, it's, okay. it's not so clear, but uh, well, maybe I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, being too sloppy, but mm. at least, at least, Okay, so forget about this. Maybe I don't want to get into the technical details when this is defined and, and all that, you know? Okay. But at least, at least if, if X is proper. Okay, sure. And and you're assuming X is regular or? Oh, you said oh, geometrically reduced only. No, oh, but then there's no boundary. There's no boundary. If I, okay, never mind. Yeah, no you're boundary. fine. So if X okay, is yeah. proper, see, what, this is, what I'm saying here is related to what comes next, okay? Mm -hmm. So the remarkable that comes, if X is proper, of course we can, I can do this. No boundary. And, and this one, yeah. yeah, this one makes sense, you know, because this one exists by the uh, right. theorem, whatever, you know. So, so sure. this may be too ambitious, and there is some technical details here to be worked out, and maybe you're right, this has to be a regular compactification and all that. Okay. But at okay. least, well, this, what is this aimed at? There's a remark here that I wrote. If one, mm -hmm. if one, if you want to attach a Boolean one motive to a variety, like separated geometry, over a perfect field, even, yeah, you're a, a very, I mean, many people, Rama Chandler has, has written about that. People mm -hmm. need resolution of singularity. Okay, they need to, you know, to insert even, well, it doesn't have to be proper, but they usually use a resolution of singularity. They, you know, mm -hmm. they, they stick it into a smooth projective. Smooth projective. Yeah. Because, because you know, then, then the then and they attach a Picard one motive, and with the mm -hmm. boundary here, and then you get a Picard as as before. But since since this guy is smooth, you know that this is an abelian variety, you know, and and, right. and so and so you get a, a usual, regular, uh, familiar Galen one motive, yeah? right? Galen one motive because you know because you're 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 embedding it into a smooth and projective. And, and Reverend Chandran has done this. Uh, and he doesn't even have to assume this. And actually, he uses some sequential methods to go to find a sequential cover that has mm -hmm. uh, something like this. And when he can't do that, then he he resorts to the Jean's alteration theorem. But that mm -hmm. is, you know, but uh, the problem with that is that you, you have to stay away from P torsion. So you know, all these uh, here, even with the this the drone alteration uh, to you know to bypass the resolution of singularities, singularities you have a you have a, an unknown. You have to take an extension, a tile extension, and there's a right. there's a factor that comes in a number. I mean, uh, a, 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 so in, 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 in summary, you have you cannot do this even over a perfect field if you care about p components. Okay? I see. Because you have to you have to work you have to work here, module, you know, you don't get any right. integral theorem. You don't get it because you have to invert the characteristic, you know? Right. So, so the problem is, what I claim is that all these problems can be uh, eliminated by not insisting, by not demanding that you that you work on the lean one mode. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have to, in order for you to avoid using the resolution of singularities or, or, or alterations or all of that, well, just, you know, eliminate the rigidity here, but this is too rigid. You know? The Galen one motive is just too nice. So you have to do something like Russell does. You know, he, he defines a, a one motive that has unicoid components. You know, the unicoid components right. come in because of the singularities, you know? And and so, so that's what I'm saying is that, um, to avoid using resolution of singularity, you enlarge the category of one motive, your target category. 
Hmm. Okay. Uh, hmm. And so now, now my naive, just as naive as it is, my naive definite extension. Russell one motives over any field. And so is the, the first naive attempt. Russell one, what should they be? Well, I suspect, well, this is what I have to work out, or, you know, if you're interested, uh, help me out with this. Hmm. It should be on the form uh, with F as before. Okay. But this G, because now we're over an imperfect field, mm -hmm. perfectly imperfect, you know, function field. Right. So you get an extension with this guy is not fine as before. Mm -hmm. And this is a pseudo opinion. This is pseudo opinion, I see. Yes, yes. Pseudo, this Kotaro pseudo opinion variety. Oh, I forget. What is the definition of pseudo opinion again? Um, that it doesn't contain uh, any affine subgroup or something like that. Anyways, but there's a nice, uh, a quick way to view it. It's like uh, an extension of an opinion variety by some uh, unipotent guy here okay and, and, and but not any such extension right like no, no, if it no, splits no. you don't want that but no, you know of course the split ones would do not work you know it has right. to be not highly non-trivial you know Totaro calls them highly non-trivial I don't know if he's the one that he calls highly non-trivial mm -hmm. but you know I read his paper I have to read it you know, usual, you know <laughs> check all the details and you know? he has some nice examples there you know, some nice fields this guy has to be commutative all the time commutative I, I'm just why, uh, like, let's suppose you just took, um, for example, like, what if you just take an arbitrary algebraic group, right? So it's an extension of an affine by a, a semi-abelian variety. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's, there, there's another another possibility, you know, what, use one of the, the Grion's theorems, you know? So it's going to be affine, and here you have an anti-affine or semi-abelian. A semi-abelian, right. semi the maximum semi-abelian variety in here, and then you get a, 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 a linear group here uh yes uh, and not fine and maybe you know maybe to this guy at the actual uh, uh, one mode um because then there's uh, no restriction uh yeah because there are no restrictions it works over any field but uh hmm. then it will be hard to uh you know relate one the, the lean one motives to this sort of stuff because in, in the case of the lean one motives the opinion variety goes on, on here you know and, and the torus goes there and so, yes. and so this is kind of, kind of back, backwards, you know, or for, or, right. but of course it would be interesting also to get duality field for such, uh, in, in such a case, you know, because then you- Well, it's just, I mean, that's a more general case, right? I mean, that's, if that's the general case, is this? Well, this is the, yeah, this is over any field, right? Yeah, so. Well, well, no, no, over a field of characteristic P, that's just every algebraic group looks like that, right? It's an extension of right. an affine by a semi uh, Well, uh, Totaro argues that, you know, that, one who really wants it is to have the 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 um, you know the linear at the, the bottom. I see. You know, he, he see. argues uh, convincingly. I guess yeah, I was convinced when I read it that uh, one, one really wants the the linear to be here on the left, you know, in, inside the group, and then you want your profit to be the the pseudo linear side. Yeah, and he also says, yeah, this is interesting, but I think the problem is that. In order to get here, at some point you have to leave the category of smooth group or something. Like that. I don't know. I have to read that again. I don't recall. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have to. You know, I've read like uh, thirty papers. In, 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 well, in I guess office. I don't know. <laughs> like I don't know what the motivation for the motive is ultimately. So like. I mean, I don't know. If you just want to prove duality theorems, it seems what you'd want to do is just whatever is the most general that'll work, right? Um, yeah, well, but I don't know. Maybe you want to do something else, so I don't know what. No, no, it's because it's because of the applications. Because you see, if like if you are interested, or, or I'm interested, I guess I'm interested. If I'm interested in 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 studying uh, algebraic Broward groups, at least, you know, as mm -hmm. in my previous talk, you know, uh, if, yeah. I, if I take the Broward, then I get H one here. Okay, the Picard, mm -hmm. the Picard scheme. So yeah. it's just proper, say proper. Okay. So so then here, here you have an H1, okay, take zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
and this guy usually is it's not an an abelian variety. You know, it can be it can even contain uh, you know unipotent groups, uh, unipotent factors sure. over k. You know, over k uh, function field. And what are you assuming about X here? Anything like is it normal or what or uh, nothing? Or? Even in the let's say X is uh, geometrical semi normal. I so, see. Like, you know, that's a very, you know, actually one would want to assume that X is semi normal. Right. Not geometrically, you know, because here we are in perfect field. So this is, you know, it's just semi normal. Nice. And so, you know, you can get some. You know, this is not stable over, uh, it's not stable by basic. So it could, your X could be properly semi, semi normal, but this one, if you go to the, this might have singularities, you know? So I mentioned that at the end of my talk that there's uh, maybe a trick to try to, to, to relate this to, to um, give what happens over a, 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 a P extension, you know, extension of degree mm -hmm. P and all that, you know? But right. I, I was I was heading to towards the one modus because this one is, is in general is not going to be an abelian variety. It's going to be maybe a semi abelian variety. Even the you know if well yeah, if X if, is semi normal, there can't be any GM stuff. Uh, but, but but if it assume it's geometrical semi normal. Right, but then there can't be any torus. So then it has to just be uh, like I think the only weird stuff is unipotent. Then uh, yeah yeah but but. Uh, well, wait a minute, if, if X is proper and geometrically semi-normal, I think a theorem of Brion says that this one is a, a semi If I, I don't think, I mean, are you sure? Because I don't, I think if it's semi-normal, it can't contain a torus. Uh, because, uh, because it's, it's, it can't have any non I, I mean, the point is if you have a map from, um, if you have a map from an open subset of, of the affine line, then that gives you a pick, an element of pick of X cross an open subset of the affine line. And I think the, I think semi-normality should tell you that that always comes from the base. Certainly normality would tell you that. And I think even semi-normality. Oh, yeah, well, if, it's, if it's geometrically normal, then this one is an abelian variety. That, that is a... No, no, I know, but I'm saying, I think you can even say that there is no, that if it's geometrically semi-normal, there shouldn't be like Taurus stuff should come from non-semi-normal. I, I think, but uh, I don't know. Maybe I made a mistake. Yeah, but that, that uh, maybe that's not right because you know. Uh, well, I already told you that Dyson's paper contains an error. I hope that right. I, I, I wrote to him and I sent him uh, uh, offers, uh, offer Gabbard's uh, counter example, and he, right. he was going to. Uh, I, I, you know, I tried to convince him, please, you know, try to get some. <laughs> Maybe some watered down version of the theorem, but please just don't write uh, a note like, uh, oh, this is theorem is wrong, so ignore it. Because that would, you know, make, but maybe he's forced to do that because maybe he's working on something else. Or maybe he has family problems or whatever. He doesn't have the time to do it. But right. hopefully, 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 I'm hoping that he will try to fix his thing. But the part, the part that apparently is, is, is correct is that uh, when when X is uh, proper and semi-normal over a perfect field, which is the same as geometrical semi-normal, then, then the Picard, this guy, you know, is an extension yeah, of an abelian variety. And there is a torus here. And, and the, the lattice that's two of this one is the um, H1X Z um, bar over the algebraic closure uh, linear tool. So, so when X is normal, this guy is zero. But in, mm -hmm. when it's, it's semi-normal, then it might not be. May, maybe it's not zero. So, so and, and Dyson says that, you know, and, and this agrees with the theorem of Brion that I'm trying to remember that says about uh, exactly the same thing, that if X is proper and geometrical semi-normal, then this guy is a semi-binary variety. Okay, so, but, mm -hmm. so now, so I have this problem. I have Brouwer X, have H1 K of a semi abelian variety, all right? Yep. And, and I want to do Lichtenbaum duality, right? Uh, maybe this guy is it's not exactly the case. This is right, right. semi abelian by a plant, plus and by, uh, is the neuron well, severity by, the neuron severity by semi abelian, okay? Yeah, yeah. Because it's the tick, it's not fixed here. Anyways, yep. but then, then if I wanna, so if I wanna uh, do duality, I need to introduce 
uh, the mean one moves because this guy is going to be a semi abelian variety. It's dual. It's not the semi abelian variety. It's the lean one moving. And mm -hmm. so, so I need to use the Harari Samole theory or for, or in order to study this guy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is the, uh, the dual, okay? The, 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 the dual of the, of the semi abelian. So, so these uh, arithmetic duality theorems are just not after things. I mean, one, one uh, does them, one proves them in order to have to eventually apply it to problems like this one, investigating the Broward group, you know? And if you, if you do this over local and then you do it over uh, global, then you have um, a, a group here appears that is, uh, you know, fundamental to study the Broward marine obstruction on varieties you know, to determine when a variety has a K point, a rational point. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so, you know, here it seems that uh, it's very abstract, but the, the applications are, are plentiful. There are many applications. The problem mm -hmm. is that when I wrote my paper on the on arithmetic quality theorem for for the lean one modus over function field, mm -hmm. I, I forgot to include, <laughs> I forgot to uh, give any application. You know, my so my paper looked like a technical result and a, a duality theorem. So the, what is that good for? So that's a nice question. It's a fair question. The referee didn't ask. Maybe he should have asked and uh, would have spent a few months, you know, writing the applications. It would have been something applied to this one over. Mm. You know? And then, you know, and then you get sidetracked in mathematics. You're trying to work on something and then another idea comes up and then you work in another direction and then you forget about this. Right, right, right. And it happened, you know, there are too many things to do. There's too little time to do it. Anymore. Mm. And uh, okay, so but here and so here there are some obvious natural questions. You no, know, if, if if this naive definition of one Russell one mode is over an imperfect field, then you know at least we have this problem. If A is a pseudo abelian, What is what should be the dual? Okay. If A is a pseudo abelian variety, what should be its dual? If A is an abelian variety, we know the dual variety. You know, this is uh, the dual abelian variety is very common, well known. But if this guy is an expansion of an abelian variety by a unipotent group, then what what is the what should be the the dual? And so that's a problem. Right. That's a problem because then because there, there are examples. Shouldn't be the... okay. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, there is there are examples in 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 uh Potaro's paper. Yeah, he he uh revisits an example of um this guy, Rosenlich. Okay, mm -hmm. it's a goat. He, uh, Totaro gives an example of a curve uh, whose Picard um, is, uh, whose pick zero is a semi abelian variety. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here we have a map as before. Okay. So this guy, so in, in, in Totaro's example, this guy is a semi abelian variety over a function. Okay. So, so if I want to do the duality, so what is the dual? In, so I need to, in order to, to study this guy, I need to do duality. So I need to define the, the one motive, the generalized Russell one motive associated to a pseudo abelian variety. You're saying, sorry, this pick not you said is a pseudo abelian variety. This I one, think you said yeah. semi abelian. Did you say semi no, 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 or pseudo? No, 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 pseudo, pseudo abelian. Pseudo, okay, yeah. It's, it's a bit of this type. Well, but is, I mean, it seems the dual should be something like. I mean, it should be something where the object you allow is like the dual, like U hat, right? Where you like Hom from U to GM, uh, right? Like, like that. Not literally. That's what it is. Like, it should be something like maybe Hom U to GM goes to the dual of B or something. The dual of B and variety. Yeah, yeah. If this is the maximum of linear variety, then it should be something like this, you know? Uh, yes. That you have the dual of linear variety of this guy, and this this guy should be this this should be Hom U associated to this guy or whatever, you know? But, well, but, hum UGM, hum UGM. Hum UGM, yeah, something like that. 
I mean, it just seems so that's the, because this is like somehow the analog of the Arham. I mean, the duel should be like the Arham, is that effectively? I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but this is, I mean, this, right a, pure, a pure duel, right? This yes, is, well, yes, yes, yes. But it's not representable or anything. It's a sort of nasty. No, but, but we don't care. I mean, it's represented by a formal group. That, that's what we have to, or I have to learn about. That. You know, it's not represented okay. by a scheme, but it's a, sure. it's, it's, it's a tame, it's, it's, it's a formal group. It's not a wild formal group. It's, you know, it's dual, it's algebraic. So it's a subclass of, of the class of all formal groups. It's okay, not, sure. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, you know, it seems that it, it, it's attainable. Okay. Yes. And, and now I'm, I was reading your thesis, or I read your thesis, I have to read it many more times in order to understand really what you did, of course. It always, it is always like that, you know. Mm. And, um, but uh, so you you got so what you did is part of the job, you know, because you so you have we have here a not fine, and here you we have a pseudo abelian variety, pseudo abelian, but that was right. And this guy, you you know, you know the duality theorem for that. You yes, have already you have already found the other many quality theorems for these, yes, right, and so. And, and, and so if, if if one defines the, the correct dual of the pseudo abelian variety, then it right. shouldn't be too far from finding, from generalizing the, the, the these theorems for the Neumann motives to Russell, to generalize Russell. Motives. Well, which theorems? What what theorems are you talking about? The arithmetic quality theorem for the Lee. Okay. Yes. So here, here's what I would, sorry, here, here's what I would say about the arithmetic. I mean, first of all, I don't think you really need to restrict the pseudo abelian. I think you can, you should be able to prove such theorems for arbitrary, like without restricting to pseudo abelian varieties. Um, I don't think that's a necessary restriction. Um, and then what I would say, so I was actually, <laughs> I was actually working on this a, a few years ago and then I got sidetracked by some other thing. And so I stopped doing it, but um, I think what you'll be able, so Milne of course, and so Milne in his book has a bunch of duality theorems for abelian varieties, uh, you know, also over function fields. Right. Um, and, the, when I was thinking about this stuff, basically what it seemed like the fundamental thing would boil down to was you could prove everything. It looked, I didn't work it out, but it looked to me like you should be able to prove everything without too much difficulty. Modulo, and, and this is because Milne's work depends on this, you require finiteness of Sha for the for this abelian variety. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. So there's something, there will probably be an assumption if you were to prove such a theorem somewhere that, you know, Sha of this abelian variety is finite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's simplified. Also, the quotient by the maximal divisible subgroup or something, but yeah. Yeah. If, if you want to do it in general, of course, the, the, the maximal divisible subgroup is a pain in the neck because you have to you know, stick it in everywhere. Anyway. Yeah. But uh, so, but you, you're saying that, but, but see, what you did is you found arithmetic value theorems for, for any linear group. Right. And, and, and but this guy, that. yeah, yeah, but this guy is, is, is not in general. And a billion variety, you know, has this problem that it's you know it's, it's a zero billion. And so, but right. for, this, for this guy, there are there are no known duality theorems that I know of that I'm aware no, of. No, 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 not for the pseudo billion. But but the point is, the point is, well, okay, of course. So you're interested in characteristic p, right? And in characteristic p, you, I mean, yes, you're right that that like the point is if you repeatedly filter your object, right? You can, um, in fact, even without repeatedly filtering. You can write anything as an extension of an abelian variety by an affine over any field. You don't assume the affine is smooth, though. But yeah, you, uh, yeah, but you don't care about that because you handle non-smooth. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm saying you can always write, you can always write anything as an extension of abelian variety by an affine. Um, this is an abelian variety, then. Yes, and L is just affine. And this is um, non-smooth. Right. It could be some horrible thing, but but it's affine. Uh, and also you can over in characters of P, you of course also have the other, but, but I think at any rate, I mean, I mean, I think that should be, and then you do of course some devisage from the two cases. Abelian varieties were basically done by Milne. Uh, right. Affine okay. is. These are well known. I mean, the duality theorems for well known. So, so right. what you're saying, so what you're saying, Modular I understand chef, what you're saying is that the, the general arithmetic duality theorems for, for any group, they should be mm -hmm. lying right below the surface because they don't work. On your team, and in, in, in this known case, and so we don't have to worry about the pseudo abelian varieties at all. 
Okay. Yeah, I don't think you should. I mean, I'm saying maybe for some definition, because I, I, I don't know exactly what you're, but maybe for your definition, it'll be a useful thing. But but I think for proving arithmetic duality theorems, you should just go the whole hog. And I don't think it'll be any simpler to deal yeah, with these pseudo abelian yeah. objects. Well, in, in, actually, because you did all this work here for, you know, even non smooth affine. Right. So, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe this is, there's no need to worry about that. You just do it like, uh, you know, like yes. you're like you're suggesting. You just, just assume there's an abelian variety. This guy could be non smooth. In fact, the reason why Totaro introduces these, these pseudo abelian varieties is because he mm -hmm. wants to have this linear smooth. I see, yeah. Yes, it is. He said, I don't want to get out of the category of smooth groups because, right, right. you know, it could be horrible, you know. But when you're, when you're doing cohomology, it's like I know in the stuff I do, it's essential that you deal with non-smooth. Even when you want are interested in smooth objects, it's essential that you deal with non-smooth things because you take all sorts of quotients to pass to, you know, extensions where maybe a situation is simpler, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's in, very important. Like, they are in like you might, yeah, they are sorry, in, what? In a, they are inescapable. You cannot avoid the noise. Yes, yes. And, and and really, I mean, this is actually, I remember Brian telling me that there was a quote that he attributed to Grothendieck that it's better to be in a good category with bad objects than a good than a bad category consisting only of good objects. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Actually, I guess that's the same reason uh, Russell defined his one motive that way, you know. Mm. You know, that's a good category to be in, you know. Right, yes. Even though the objects may be bad because there are some unipotent components, you know? Right, but, right. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. And so well, he, I think Rothenick was right because, you know, people trying to, to restrict themselves to one, to the lean one modus only, they get into mm. all sorts of problems, you know, assuming resolution of singularity, uh, you know, alterations by the dawn, some simplicial right. things up here and all that, you know, just in order for them to deal with only nice, Semi up, semi abelian right. varieties and all that, you know, but that's a bad category to work in. Yes. So you have to enlarge the category. So that 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 uh, quote is right. Okay, well, well, that looks very good, but uh, still has to be done. And oh, by the way, when I read your thesis, there was no mention of K wound groups. The, oh, sorry, of what? Of K one groups? K wound groups, like form of the affine line, forms of GA, and all that. They they do show up in your thesis, right? Oh wait, sorry. K. What is a K one group? What do you mean K one? Oh, K wound. Oh, wound, wound. Oh yes, yes. Uh, well, I, well, I guess it depends. What do you mean, my thesis? You mean the Tate duality thing? Yeah, Tate duality. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Well, you don't need that. They don't come up anywhere because I mean, woundness is like a pro is it's a property over a particular field, and it's not really it's it's not relevant anywhere in that cohomological yeah, yeah. calculation. Like woundness doesn't really help you for dealing with. I mean, basically, right? You you do some devisage from finite GM and GA, right? That's always what you're doing there. Right, because yeah. you say at some point that, in some, at some point you write that you do, any any group, uh, mm -hmm. it's an extension of a, I don't know what it's Right, of a- here you, have, you have a split unipotent? Yes. And here you have an almost or. Yes, that's right. And, and that's all you need, right? Yep. And so I guess a K1 group then, should be of this type, right? Should fit in here. It is because any unipotent, let's say a smooth connected unipotent group, there's a finite subgroup such that the quotient is split unipotent. And you can assume that finite group, it, you can take it to be either a tall or infinitesimal. So right. in a tall, that's not so clear. Infinitesimal, the proof is easier. You just mm -hmm. uh, take the kernel of a power of Frobenius, so to speak, right? An n-fold for Frobenius so and if, over some- oh, Yeah, if you have a particular k wall group, like a form of GA, Sure. Well, mentioned, then, you know, so you, you can still do this, right? You, you just take the quotient. And then it is GA. Like there's some etal such that that is isomorphic to GA, and there's also some infinitesimal such that that is isomorphic. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, there's a, probably if, if J is if G is K1, like this guy, or dimension one, probably you yeah. get something like a, a, a purely separable isogeny or something like that, right? Yeah, that's right. It may not be alpha p, but yeah, it, yeah, some, yes, some, it could some, be like alpha p square or something like that, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Some, some infinitesimal. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so cohomologically speaking, then, uh, the K1 groups don't show up because this guy has trivial cohomology, and all you have to worry about is the cohomology of the infinitesimal. Right? 
so yes. why are the infinitesimal over well well i should say though by the way because you said ga is is trivial cohomologically which is true ga is trivial but when you consider ga dual a yeah, big you, part of you, what i do is like you have computing a h2 of that is 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 actually quite difficult no yeah yeah i understand so if you go to the dual if you take the cartier dual that then you're in trouble yeah, you, you well, well, not in trouble. It's just it's 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 a difficult thing to understand. I mean, I'll give you an example. Like, this is somewhere in in that Tate duality book. H two of K G A hat. A big part of it. One of the most important aspects in the book is I show that H two of K G A hat is a one. So it, it always has a vector, K vector space structure over any field, um, yeah. basically by the K linear action on G A. Yeah, and it's one dimensional if K is degree of imperfection one, like a local function field, say, or a global function mm -hmm. field. And if k is degree of imperfection bigger than one, so in other words, the degree of k over k to the p is bigger than p, then it's infinite dimensional. So it's like... <laughs> so it's either, either very nice or horrible. <laughs> yes. If, if k is perfect, it's zero. If k is degree of imperfection one, it's one dimensional. And if k is degree of, imp degree of imperfection bigger than one, it's infinite dimension. It's like a terrible, complicated yeah, mess. Huge, huge. Well, that's yeah. very nice, you know? So, so this, this, uh, uh, so th this, uh, these duality theorems that I need to mm. apply for the Brouwer group. Yeah. Uh, so I could just get them by combining your species with known stuff, essentially. Yes. Well, except again, there's this caveat that you'll have to probably assume like uh, finiteness of Shaw. Oh, because oh, 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 yeah, but I wouldn't want to assume that in general. Uh, Unless you quotient by the maximal divisible subgroup, I mean, I don't know, but yeah, yeah, like but in that, Milne's book, I think in Milne's book, that's all over the place. That finiteness, uh, not for the local theorem. I mean, it depends. For local theorems, you're fine, but for global theorems, there's some Shaw finiteness assumption. Yeah, in yeah. A lot of these results. And if you, if one wants to avoid those assumptions of uh, you know Sha Sha one not finite, then it's technically very painful. Technically very painful, but still doable. You know, but it takes a long time. Mm -hmm. Mod out by everything, you know, by the visible maximum visible group is a pain in the neck. And yeah, but anyways, it, it can be done. So, all right, so your thesis is powerful enough to, to get me the, the duality theorem. The, yeah, I'm not saying, by the way, that it's like some, you know, something that'll be, I've never actually worked it out. So, like, maybe there's some subtle, you know, step, like Devisage can be sort of subtle, but mm -hmm. I'm saying I think it's it should be completely doable by combining. The affine and the abelian variety case, which Milne did, and then the dual object should be, yeah. So I was like thinking the, there are several possibilities actually, but I think the most logical one is you take Arham of GGM in the category, though not in the category of FPPF Shebs, but in the category of, uh, I guess what locally finite type or maybe finite type group schemes. Probably doesn't make a difference locally, mm -hmm. but in, in the in the category of like group schemes rather than of FPPF Shebs. Because then it's sort of you get a lot of extra terms you don't want to deal with if you do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, uh, and and of course I will have to. Uh, I think and then I will have to because of this example that I mentioned that it's in total mm -hmm. paper. I will have to uh, express in some precise way maybe a pseudo linear variety. Mm -hmm. I find the L that I need here. Okay. But when this guy is a pseudo opinion variety, it's a knee, yeah. the Taurus paper. So, so I guess I have to. Well, Tiba, what are you trying to do? You're trying to do some explicit calculation for a pseudo opinion variety, or what? Like. No, no, I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to find the most general arithmetic duality theorem for the proper, the correct category of one motives, so that mm -hmm. I can apply it, I, I apply it to this situation. That's what I'm yeah, but I think the correct category of motives is, sorry, there was this thing, right, where you, what was the category? It was like you had a formal group with duo, algebraic dual or whatever, right. and then you had, and then I think the thing on the other side should just be an arbitrary. I mean, my guess would be, because again, why restrict yourself? I don't think being pseudo abelian will help you at all in a cohomological calculation. Mm -hmm. I think you should just say F, your formal thing goes to a, just an algebraic group, so a finite type group scheme. Right. Without any assumption whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, find a type group algebraic group. It doesn't even have to be smooth. Yeah, no, you don't want to restrict to smooth because that's too restrictive. Yeah. yeah.
At least that's what I think the thing should be. And then you apply it to your special case where maybe everything is nice, but. Yeah, so. Yeah, sorry, commutative, yeah. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, define the, the one, you know, just generalize the Russell one motives in the obvious way, the naive way, and then mm -hmm. you just use them to your thesis, which is the this case, you know? It should be. Yeah, I think, I think that's what is the, I think that's probably the correct approach. I mean, I can't guarantee it, but I think that's probably the correct yeah. approach. Yeah. Well, it's something to try anyway, it's something worth, worth trying. Uh, yeah, I think that's all I have to say. I mean, not much. Oh, oh one hour, oh, I'm sorry. I, I, no, it's fine, it was interesting. Okay. Yeah. So I, I guess I'll start, I'll start working on this. Uh, I'm sure you have other things to do or other people to work with. If, if you wanna do any of that or help me out, you'd be welcome. Yeah, I mean, if you ever like uh, wanna talk, you have a question about something or, I mean, the thing is, as I said, I was thinking about this a few years ago, but then I sort of got sidetracked by other things. So, right. But yeah, no, it would be an interesting thing. Yeah. Do you think this is worth uh, doing, writing down and applying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I no, I think I think it would be very good to have it written. Like, if someone actually had carefully worked it all out, and you know, then no one would ever have to do it again. <laughs> you know. Right. Yeah, it's going to be a pain. I I can I can start working on this uh, soon, I guess, and maybe. Uh, in a few weeks, I can send you a copy and ask for your, your opinion. And if you have something to contribute, then maybe it'd be great. If the if you're busy, busy doing other things or working out, that's okay. I mean, it, there's no obligations, you know. I know you have. Yeah, sure, it's fine. Yeah, bro, you have uh, you have lots of access to lots of people there in the U.S. that you, you can work with and have interesting things to write about. And um, well, I'm isolated here, so you know, I'm trying to use this Zoom stuff. They, right. that I use for my classes to, to try to break from my isolation because you know uh, every time I want to have a conversation with, math, with a mathematician that does my type of math I have to take a plane for 12-15 hours to go to France right. to, go to, to the US you know and, and then I, I go there for a week and I, I barely learn anything because you know there's still little time and that's the I problem see, right. you know? so I'm, I'm an isolated singular point I can. I can. Where, where are you based? Where? What's the? Which university are you based at? In the north of Chile, La Serena, a very small university. Okay. Not, not very prestigious. Okay. Uh, but uh, the problem is there is nobody working in my area here that I can ask questions. Right. You know, and, and it's been like that since 1995. So everything oh. I know, everything I I know, everything I have learned, I have learned through reading. Not from any, uh, not from another human being, you know. Right, right. I, I didn't have the like Brian had the Brian Conrad had the good good fortune to learn from Gopal Prasad in Michigan, you know, mm. and and you had the good fortune to learn from Brian from everybody else, but right. I don't, I have never learned anything from anybody. Not because I didn't want to, it's because I've been right. here, you know, and I've been right, here right. since 1994, and mm. you know, in in 1994 I started working on Harshan's book. I didn't know anything about, I was so ignorant. And I had already mm -hmm. written my thesis, you know, I had written my thesis and I was so ignorant and I knew, I, I knew nothing. So I, I said to myself, I have to, I have to learn by myself because of my conditions here, isolation conditions. I have to learn by myself, otherwise I'll be doing elliptic curves forever, you know, <laughs> because right, that's right. what I wrote my thesis on, you know, elliptic curves. So <laughs> I had to study for, for decades in order to get here. I see. That's good. You know, but that's life. What can I do? Yeah, it's good. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, type this up. Uh, it might take me two or three months, and then I can send you a copy and, and ask what you think, or maybe you find an error or something. You know. Okay, sure. Yeah, sounds or, good. Or, or if you wanna, or if you wanna work, or if you wanna start working on this, like we exchange notes every two weeks or something like that. If you're, uh, not I, I mean, I, to be honest, I probably can't now because I'm sort of busy with some other projects now. But right. Um, but if you wanted to like send me stuff and ask me like email me oh here's just a question I have or whatever that would be fine I mean okay good good yeah, yeah. I can I can do that I can start working on this stuff and then send you questions from once every once in a while and maybe yeah, sure. maybe uh, maybe who knows maybe we uh, end up uh, working on something related to this that's more challenging perhaps or more interesting okay sure no, yeah. yeah whatever we'll see where it goes. We we'll see where it goes. Yeah, yeah I hope I'm hoping that uh, Geyser sent me uh, an errata, you know, uh, mm. fixed for his problems, and maybe, uh, maybe, um, maybe we can work on that thing too because it'd be nice to have the structure of the card well known. 
over any field. Well, that's an interesting problem too. But I don't know if he right. has time to work on that. You know, everybody's busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. It's understandable. <laughs> well, Zeb, how are you doing personally? I mean, you're you're okay. You're not gonna you're, you're not a danger of getting infected or anything like that, right? Oh uh, well, I mean, I guess I can't know whether I am, but I think I should. I mean, first of all, I'm pretty young, right? So I'd probably be like, you're probably at higher risk than I am, right? I mean, I don't know how old you. Are. I don't want to ask, but no, no. <laughs> but, uh, I I'll be, uh, I'm 59 in a few months. So. Okay, so you're probably at higher risk, I guess. I mean, you're fine probably, but you're at higher risk, I think, than I am. I mean, I'm 29, so I'll probably. Yeah, you're, 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 you should be okay. But you're, in which yeah. part of the US are you at now? Right now, I'm in New Jersey. I mean, right now, I'm in New Jersey. You're, you're in New Jersey now. That's where I physically am right now, yeah. Right, but you're visiting or something like that, right? Because then you have- Yeah, to... I'm actually based at Hebrew University. You have to go back to Israel eventually, right? Yeah, but it's sort of a mess because they have they're locked down and it's a whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. but I mean, I mean, the people who pay your salary are there. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Of course, yes, yes. <laughs> so yes. you have eventually. Yeah, no, that's very important. Yeah, <laughs> that's important. Yeah, you eventually have yes. to go back. You know. Yeah. Anyways, uh, I think I have some friends in Israel. Uh, Misha Borovoy, Boris Konyaski. Ah, okay. Boris Konyaski too, and a student of his, Ronnie Bitan. Yeah, he's. he's ah, okay. He's a student of. Uh, a former student of Kuyaski. So, so we are okay. not, not good friends, but we exchange notes. But you know each other. Once in a okay. while. Yeah. Anyway, Zeb, many thanks okay. for listening to me for all yeah, your it was thanks for, uh Yeah, it was nice. It was interesting talking to you. It was nice talking to you. Many yeah. thanks for that. And I'll send you some questions eventually, okay? Okay. Thanks a lot. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. I'll see you. See you.